Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this video and coming to check out what the old Tin Man's doing. I'm going to cut right to the chase. If you're a small engine mechanic, a mechanic, uh, a chainsaw porter like me, do you feel like you spend so much time cleaning parts, scrubbing away with your brake clean? I don't even know if I have a can here. I got cans of brake clean all over the shop. I'm constantly spraying and cleaning and blowing the junk off onto my floor then i gotta sweep my floor all the time um especially in winter i i don't clean parts outside so the floor here is always covered in dirt grease chips do you guys feel like you're just constantly cleaning parts well i sure do uh, a lot of the time i spend in this shop is cleaning saws so for the last you know while i've been thinking there's got to be a better way because realistically, I spend my life cleaning these items. Cylinders. Plastics. Carburetors. Oh, I clean a lot of carburetors. Sitting there. Chainsaw chain. Sorry, chainsaw chain. Okay, so what I did was I picked up a ultrasonic cleaner. I have... I have heard of this technology for quite a while. It's been around since the 50s, apparently. Um, my dentist cleans my teeth with an ultrasonic cleaner, and I love that because no scraping. It takes half the time. Um, it doesn't seem to hurt, so uh, I like ultrasonic cleaning for doing my teeth. Also, um, I have a buddy. Uh, the first time I was really exposed to ultrasonic cleaning, uh, I have a buddy that takes his rifle brass and he puts it into a small ultrasonic cleaner like this and he showed me and I was like wow that that cleans that brass real nice so I knew of this technology and as the channel grows and I have the support of of folks out there like you I can afford to purchase this kind of stuff for the channel so I bought this online these are super uh, available I don't even know what name brand this is. It just says Digital Ultrasonic Cleaner. Um, this one's digital. It has a heater on it and a timer. And uh, it's got a drain on this side. It's got an on off button on the back. So let's plug this in. Uh, I got some hot water uh, dish soap with some dish soap and a little touch of Simple Green. Simple Green is corrosive. If you rinse it off right away, it usually doesn't hurt anything. Um, I learned that the hard way uh, on a Harley years ago. I sprayed it with Simple Green, uh, my bare aluminum engine, and I spent uh, a weekend polishing it after. So, Anyhow, let's plug this thing in, fill it full of water, fire it up, and let's just throw some random junk. It's kind of like when you buy a deep fryer. I don't have a deep fryer. I'm not responsible enough. But if you've ever bought a deep fryer, what are you deep frying? Everything. Chocolate bars, pizza pops, pierogies. It's trouble. I hope I don't get carried away with this. Uh, anything that'll fit in there, I guess, is fair game. Let's fill, let's fill this thing up, put the plug in it, and get it happening. And let's just throw some random chainsaw junk in and see if it cleans it. Give me a few seconds. I'll set this up. Here's the unit set up. It's got temperature controls on this side. Uh, I like it, it's in Celsius, and I'm a Canadian fella. I'm sure if you buy one in the States, it's in Fahrenheit. It may not be, though. And a timer on-off switch. I'll get you guys a shot of inside. This is a 10.5 liter one. I was going to buy a bigger one, but I thought, nah, this should do 90% of what I need. And it's, it's very small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So I think this is going to be the one... That'll get the most use in my shop. You may only need a small one. They make 3 liter ones. They make 25 liter ones. Of course, as the size goes up, the price increases dramatically. Okay, stainless steel lid with a handle. And a basket. Now, the way this technology works is it sends a frequency into the water. And it. I did a little reading on this. It creates almost like a vibration and it makes bubbles and then the bubbles burst and it takes the crud off. Pretty neat. Um, you want to use this with a basket apparently all the time. Okay, 
Now, you can fill this full water and put the parts right in here, or you could put it, uh, I see a lot of guys are using uh, glass jars or plastic jars. Apparently, the vibrations will go through the jars, so I like to clean carburetors with straight gas. Well, I don't want to put 10 liters of gas in there with the price of gas nowadays, right? I don't want to smell that gas. Well, you could put the gas in a jar and put that in the water and put your carburetor in there, so... Pretty neat. Okay, I'm gonna fill this thing up with my DIY cleaning solution. If if the solution's no good, I'll let you guys know. I just whipped it up. It's hot water, uh, Dawn dish soap, and some uh, a little splash of simple green. Not much simple green. I've had this in front of my wood stove. Water's still nice and hot. Okay, let's fire this machine up. Okay, there's a switch on the back. Ooh, it makes noises. The flickering, you see those are LED lights. So they always flicker. What does it say? It's set at 25 degrees. Actual is 33. So it's actually measuring the temp of my water. Let's try the heating function. Three minutes. Okay, well, I was gonna try and put this in there, but I don't think it's gonna fit. Let's get this basket out. Will this fit in there? No, so a 394 top cover won't fit. That's okay. Let's put this cylinder in there, see what it does. Give you a quick shot of it before. Look how dirty that is. This thing's gross. Okay, we'll put that in the basket. What else do we have that's kicking around here? Oh, well, let's just try the cylinder. Let's put it in there for a minute or two and see what it does. These things are impossible to clean. Uh, even in a parts washer, the, the fins and that, you just can't get in there. It's, uh, you end up using a wire brush. It takes forever. Now, this thing is not completely immersed. Let's put a little more, a little more juice in there, a little more go juice. There we go. Okay, ready? I am, I'm excited. Oh, that sound. Maybe a little too much soap, it's very bubbly. Oh, you can see it already. Can you guys see the crud coming off of there? Look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to leave this in there for three minutes. And clean it off good, because like I said, uh, I don't want to corrode this cylinder. But uh, I'll leave it in here for the cycle, and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. There you go, there's three minutes. Let's pull this thing out. Wow. Now, the cylinder still has discoloration, but look how clean it is in between the fins. I'm just going to blow it off so you guys can see it dry. All the heavy deposits are gone. Look at this side. Now again, you couldn't do that in three minutes with a wire brush because it's so hard to get into the fins. This side still has some debris on it, but that's not bad. Pretty cool. Let's try something else. How about, this is my personal favorite thing to clean. How about a recoil off of a Husqvarna 266? Look how dirty this thing is. Boop. Let's do another three minutes. Ready? I think sounds cool when you fire it up. Again, I'll let it go for three minutes and we'll pull it out. I'm genuinely interested in this. Okay, there's three minutes done. Wow. Again, I'll just blow the water off so you guys can see. Now, there still is some debris there. I didn't brush these off. I want to see the straight up cleaning power. 
Now, if I was a smarter man, I would blow and brush these off and then stick them in, but I just wanted to see how well it works. Hold on, I'm going to blow this off. Wow. Look at the top. I would say 95% of the debris has come off in one three-minute cycle. So, these things take me like an hour to clean if I'm using a brush and solvent. And I got to take it all apart. There, there's a little bit left there. But here's the funny thing. Look, that stuff's loose now. You can just blow it right off. So... Pretty cool. What else can we throw in there? Let's throw one more thing in there. It's like a deep fryer. You can't stop. Grody 266 air filter. Look how cruddy that is. Shook. Ooh. You go down. There we go. Still O26 top cover. X City of Winnipeg saw. Good times. Okay. You guys know the deal. These are always covered and stuff and the creme de la creme let's throw that in there and see what comes off i'm gonna do this for i'm gonna put the heat up a little bit and i'm gonna do this for i don't know 10 minutes okay there we go and i'm gonna turn the heat at like i don't know 55 60 i don't know there you go we'll let these things run for 10 15 minutes and see what they look like when they're done this is fun okay i'll shut this thing off it was going for 15 ish minutes one thing i just noted you have to turn the heat on separately the on lights here um i turned it on at about five minutes i set it to 66 it's at 41 so um just a, a note if you get one of these they're all pretty much the same from what i can see anyways i'll turn it off Let's have a look at the goodies inside. Look at all that junk floating. Okay, so. I'm pull this up. Oh, wow. Well, let's start with the air filter. And again, I'll just, I'll blow the water off and out of it. And then we can have a look at it. Here's our air filter. It's wet still, but I can see through it. So. I don't know if you guys could see, but I could see the intake, the intake elbow right here. Little bit of crud left, but anything that was remaining on there pretty much just blew off. And again, this thing was completely packed with crud. There's a little bit left in there, but these can be hard to clean. They're super fine. Super, super impressed. I've been cleaning these for years by hand. I think I'll ultrasonic them first. Now, of course, if you're going to throw this on a saw, you wouldn't want to because it's full of water. But you take these two screws out and these come apart and stick a screwdriver in there. Okay, so there's that. Let's look at the top cover. <laughs> I don't even need to blow this one off. You guys can see the magic. Look at how clean that is. From now on, I'm doing plastics this way. No grease or oil left, nothing. 100% clean. So I'm going to say for plastics, this is, a, this is a go. That disgusting side cover, one of the dirtiest things to clean. 90%. There's a little bit there. And again, I'll blow it off. Let's see if the rest of that stuff comes off. And again, that's scorched from a muffler. Inside, completely clean now. So, that is 100% a win. So, again, I did three minutes in this cylinder. I bet you if I put it back in there, you know, for 10 or 15 minutes, it would be even cleaner than it is. Three minutes with this. Again, I'm almost just, while well, I'm standing here, I'm going to throw this thing in there and let it rock and roll, I think, before I drain it. But, uh... Super, super impressed. Look at all this stuff floating here. So I'm happy with this. Well, I'm going to say for me, this unit is 100% worth the cost. I've already saved myself. I can't even count how many hours it would have spent just cleaning this. You know, how dirty this thing was. Things like side covers. I can just pop them off the saw and throw them in there. Recoils. I mean, honestly, 
if it'll fit in there and it doesn't have electronics in it, I see no reason why you can't clean it. So this thing here is a win. That was a lot of fun. I've been wanting to get one of these for a long time. And uh, this is the first time it kind of jogged my memory. I was ordering parts and stuff and I thought I should order one of those and see what they're all about. Um, the cost of this, this was a couple hundred dollars Canadian. Um, I can't remember the exact cost. I'd have to look at the bill. But for me, if you're doing small engine repair all the time, small engines are dirty. They live in dusty, oily um, environments. And you guys know, you small engine guys, whether you're working on lawnmowers, weed whackers, chainsaws, um, any of that stuff, these things are dirty and you spend a lot of time cleaning before you're even repairing. So at least I do. So if you're doing small engine repair, even one of the small ones, I mean, if you can fit a cylinder in or something like that, you're ahead of the game. Um, I may even get a bigger one later down the road. I want one that I could fit cases in um, and just let them go. That would be fun. Um, I think... Some smaller cases will fit. Your bigger saws won't fit. I already tried. But this size for me will is big enough. It's easy to drain. And it doesn't take up a lot of shelf space. So um, I think I'll be using this thing quite often. And again, it's easy to drain because there's a ball valve here. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you're working on small engines, these ultrasonic cleaners are a must-have. I've had this thing for one day now, and I'm already thinking, why did I take so long to get one? Because the amount of cleaning I've just done in no time, um, it's just saving me time. I can be doing other things, like I could be porting a cylinder while I'm cleaning the parts for the saw. Um, just let this thing go. I can't see it hurting anything, especially plastic and stuff like that. And if you don't have a corrosive cleaner in your water, you could have metal going in there for a long time before I foresee any issues. So anyhow, I'll keep you guys updated on this. Thanks for checking out this video. I enjoyed making it. And uh, if you guys use these, post a comment below. And uh, I'd appreciate that. And uh, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.